And another happy good morning to you. I'm still here, yes, indeed, and uh, glad to be, glad to be. Today, we're going to look at the Franklin County Board of Supervisors. They had a meeting on May 19th, which uh, today is May 20th, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That must have been yesterday, okay. And hey, oh, we got, they survived, they're here. So <laughs> they, were hard, they weren't hard on you, huh? Uh, yesterday. Good morning, sir. Would you gentlemen introduce yourself, please? Uh, I'm Bob Kamisha, the supervisor from the Gills Creek District. Good to see you, Bob. Good Thank to you. See you, sir. And Rick Huff from the County Administrator's Office. All right. The County Administrator. Yes, the County Administrator. <laughs> yes. I like that. Thank you, Rick. It's good to see you and good to have you both in here. Uh, as we usually do, um, Let's talk about what occurred and talk about where we are and what's going on. And uh, you are the, uh, I guess you're the reigning senior something or other down there. So I'll give you first shot. So <laughs> when I, yeah, I tell Rick, when I figure out what it is he does, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it. I want to tell you that uh, you do plenty. Thank you, sir. And I, that's, a, a, that's the best way I can say it. You know, I can throw lots of bouquets, and you're not here for that. Yeah. But uh, uh, you are very good at what you do, and publicly, I appreciate it, and so does the world, known as Franklin County. Well, thank you, Dick. And uh, as I've said many, many times, the uh, the face often gets credit for what the worker bees do, and we've got a lot of really talented workers uh, for Franklin County that day in and day out do some spectacular work. The taxpayers, uh, citizens, and visitors, guests, and businesses of Franklin County should be uh, very proud of the work that uh, the employees of the county do. Uh, school division, county courts, uh, from one end to the other, it's a great group of people. And I'm, uh, uh, I count it a pleasure to have had the opportunity to serve in this community. Thank you, the pleasure what do you say? Was all I, ours? I say that, let me speak, I think I'm speaking for the full board. Um, of course, I think most of us know Rick's leaving us in another month and a half, uh, and we're all very sad about it. Uh, Rick has been, for 24 years, two different times. Uh, he left us for a little bit there in between. Um, he's been a, a, a real rock for this county. He has... Uh, he makes good decisions. He implements the policies uh, of the board uh, very, very well. He's uh, noted as everyone by everyone as being a really fair uh, person, a great administrator, a uh, great people person. And that's all I'm going to say good about you now. <laughs> Twenty dollars well spent. <laughs> <I'll just laughs> <think about. laughs> yeah, the board really, really hates to see him go. Uh, yeah. and if Appreciate all of his time and personal time that he puts in outside of the, you know, the 40 hours that uh, you expect. He puts a tremendous amount of personal time into the county. It's an interesting thing because that's, uh, uh, I would reintroduce myself to my late wife, Carol, when I was running the bank here, when I showed up every now and then. Mm -hmm. And I mean, so I'm relating to what you just said because now, fortunately though, I could get to work blindfolded if I had to, and uh, it was all downhill also So yeah. you know, <laughs> at when I was running the bank in, in Rocky Mount. But yes, I will say ditto, and we'll just leave it at that. Don't want to embarrass the man, but uh, it's hard to not say it when you reach a point, right? Absolutely. Okay. That's all, Rick. Thank you, sir. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're a pretty good guy. As they say when I grew up, you know, if you were slur those, were you a good guy? Yeah, you're a good guy. guy. Yeah, and you're a good guy. Yeah. So that's a, that's the way it was. That almost goes was. with your uh, Long Island comment you made earlier. <laughs> yes, Long Island. Yeah, Long Island. I always get kicks out of that. But uh, yeah, um, we had uh, the mini old affair uh, in in Long Island, which still exists which was kind of like court days, but a little bit more tight, like what we did last year for the first time in many years. 
with that fare and that involvement. So it's good things happening in Franklin County, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, it's interesting that there are so many references now to Rocky Mount, and it's being referred to as historic. And on this poster, it says, in historic Rocky Mount, Virginia, court days that, that are due June 13th. Incidentally, mark your calendar, June 13th. Be in town. Okay, it's enough pitching there, but let's uh, let's take a quick look. Oh, I'll pitch more. Don't worry. I will as I hear things and as people become available, we're going to have them down here. And uh, ah, let's see. Next week, I'm going to introduce you if you have not met her, the new head librarian, the new chief of the library system, and. Uh, I, I really, I like her, and she's going to come in, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So uh, try to keep you in tune, if you please, okay? Let's look at the meeting yesterday, gentlemen, and uh, I can just open the floor, and you can comment, or I can ask questions, or uh, uh, in the paper today, let me just throw out an opening in the paper today, they're talking about uh, sitting judges, new judges, uh, new people being appointed, some moving on and running for office, and, or some lawyers moving in, or the county losing some employees because they're going into this. Um, and I find as I look that we are really short on places, and yet there's some information in the paper about it today. And uh, how do we stand? Well, uh, Rick addressed the courthouse. There's a series of changes going on there. Okay. When the new government center was built, obviously one of the goals of that was to get the uh, high traffic offices out of the courthouse, treasurer and commissioner uh, of revenue, for instance, uh, because we knew the security uh, upgrade was coming where folks would have to go through metal detectors and so forth. And we wanted to get those high traffic areas out of the courthouse. Um, the plan all along when that space was vacated in the courthouse was to create room for additional courtrooms because we knew that given the caseloads in Franklin County and they were growing, uh, that there would come a day soon when we would need an additional courtroom or two. Um, the article in yesterday's paper and the issue that the board dealt with yesterday uh, was responding to the recent appointment of uh, Judge-elect Tim Allen uh, to the juvenile court bench. Uh, Tim, of course, is our current Commonwealth attorney. Uh, he, uh, July 1st, will become uh, juvenile and domestic relations judge and sit uh, in Danville, Pennsylvania County, and Franklin County. So it's a, uh, it's a circuit, it's a region. Uh, he will fill in and, and have court uh, in all three jurisdictions, but given that our current juvenile judge, Judge Rice, uh, occupies her courtroom five days a week uh, on a full-time basis, we did not have additional courtroom space for Judge Allen uh, uh, to hold court. So uh, the decision yesterday was to renovate the former Commissioner of Revenue space in the courthouse, uh, which, uh, as I said, is today vacant and purposely so. Uh, awaiting uh, some decisions on these court uh, movements and the uh, uh, there will be a second courtroom developed in the former Commissioner of Revenue space, there will be holding cells, uh, waiting areas to separate the two parties in a domestic uh, dispute while they're awaiting court and try to create as safe an environment as possible for those people who need to access our court system. So um, the comment was made yesterday, didn't we just finish upgrading the courthouse and here we are at it again. And uh, Mike Thurman, who is our uh, incredibly capable uh, director of building and grounds, uh, reminded us that the uh, recent upgrades were all security related. They, they weren't really creating additional space, but we're making sure that those that were in the courthouse uh, were safe and make sure we didn't have any uh, uh, problems from a safety standpoint. Uh, and this will actually renovate some space and create an additional courtroom. You know, the last thing I will say about that and, and, and step back is there is still some discussion uh, that a second circuit court may be needed in the next 
three, five, eight years. I mean, it's been discussed for quite some time. Our caseload uh, approaches it. We've got a drug court that's getting up on its feet uh, that is trying to take some of the pressure off of the juvenile court system. And that court has to have a place uh, mm. uh, to operate. So uh, again, we've got some additional space in our courthouse. A lot easier, although it's never cheap, a lot easier to renovate existing space in a courthouse than try to think about having to add on or go somewhere else with court facilities. So we're in a very good position having uh, created a government center and pulling some folks out of there and creating this expansion space for the future so that uh, uh, in the scheme of things it's relatively uh, easy to uh, keep all the courts in one place. Any comments, Bob? Just that I just love that old building. You know, it's, yeah. one, it's wonderful that we've been able to do the, these kinds of moves and things and preserve the, the history of Rocky Mountain, preserve that, uh, that facility. It's, uh, it's a beautiful old building. Yeah, I think you, uh, you reckon people all have a story and all have experienced and uh, uh, positive or negative, good or bad, whatever side you were on, you know, <laughs> what went on there. And uh, uh, the former Sheriff Overton uh, was uh, the leader in a few cases of taking care of business. And, uh, and there were so many stories. It was very interesting, very interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's a grand, grand building. I mean, if you want to look at a courthouse, mm -hmm. there's one. Yeah. And I'm grateful that that was updated and made safe and made proper. Uh, there was a lot of hoorah about that, ne uh, some of it negative, you know, where are we going to go, what are we going to do, but it's been handled beautifully and I'm very thankful. Now, of course, as soon as we get that done, they say, hup, never mind, <laughs> what, got another one. <laughs> yeah. But that's good and you made comment about the uh, building where your office is and the um, uh, everything that goes on out there. Uh, that is, I don't know, what's the time? Five minutes away? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But from the other courthouse. Yeah. courthouse. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's uh, a beautiful place. Plenty of parking, plenty of room whew, for growth, <laughs> you know, and mm -hmm. things happening. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot, of, a lot of good things going on. And it's always interesting, the good things many times are led by a excess of some bad things, you know, but, but you have to respond to it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well said. What do you think? Uh, one of the other things I think that uh, happened yesterday that's uh, really good, uh, we extended the lease uh, for the uh, Y, for, you know, we, we leased the Y for some facilities. And uh, it was, uh, they gave us a bit of an update on what they had been doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really, really heartening to see the Y get on its feet again. It was having some rough times there for a while and still trying to shake off some of that. But they are really providing a tremendous number of services to the uh, citizens of our county. And that's, uh, that's you know, to be commended. Uh, uh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that is being under the auspices of the county and the county's acquiescence and considerations and working together with Jim Curry and the people at the Y. They, they, they are providing a needed service and doing it um, with a relatively small staff and on a shoestring, you know, it, it's really... I, I think there's a great effort to try to watch the money that's spent, and uh, and of course there's never enough. Right, never enough. <laughs> you know that, yeah. and that's probably about everywhere. Yeah. But uh, that has grown so fast, and every week it seems there's another offering that comes down the road. That do we really need it? Well. 
ask the 50 people that go in there and try to avail themselves of the service. Yes, we evidently do really need it. So uh, it's good, it's happy people. You go in the Y, ladies and gentlemen, in their little lobby area there, and you go in there in the midst of what's happening on an average day. You can have what appears to be easily 500 children. Now, maybe it's not that many, <laughs> but happy kids coming from school, learning to swim, participating, and uh, uh, sewing, knitting, weightlifting, basketball, learning how to swim. You name it. It's all going on there. So, I mean, it's a very active, good place. Now, uh, yeah, sometimes things get too good. You know, you just go and you just keep, keep growing. And uh, so participate is what I'm about to bring to you. But go out there, join, participate. They need your support also. The county is putting itself into it, is allowing, is appreciating, is helping, is prodding, whatever you want to call it. But everybody recognizes the value. But we need the community support, too, to continue to grow, get everybody involved, and, and that'll help it. They need, the, they need the donations. They need yeah. the help. They need, it's, a, it's an expensive operation to mm -hmm. run, but it's great for the community. And it keys into something we've talked about before here, which is uh, the economic development of the county. Mm -hmm. uh, as companies come and look at us, and many, many do uh, daily, um, that's one of the things they look at. Uh, mm -hmm. Something else was on the agenda that um, we did at the meeting yesterday and, yesterday and last night is look at long haul, how do we bring more businesses into the county? And one of those things is the transportation system. Uh, we've, uh, we voted to um, move forward with supporting I-73 in combination with Roanoke, Roanoke County, Patrick County, and ourselves, try to support moving that forward uh, because it's a, down the road, I may or may not see it, but down the road, it's going to be a key to the growth, continued growth and prosperity of the county and to bring new businesses of all sorts in. So um, that's, that's moving forward. Good. I think that's absolutely right. Are we hearing that as we, you know, as people approach us? Uh, is that an element that comes up? highway system, I-73, oh, oh. that's the thing that turns your head, you know, if people, if, if right. nine out of ten people that come in and say, but you don't have, or what are your plans, is that something that you're hearing? Every day. Um, it's, it's difficult and in some ways frustrating to explain to folks how the economic development business works, and, and I'm not going to get into all of that. But suffice it to say, think about the communities in Virginia that are, in many people's eyes, extremely successful in economic development. We've been very successful given some of the challenges we have had, but the folks that are extremely uh, successful are all on an interstate, and there's a reason for that. Uh, that interstate interchange, the access to the interstate transportation system, uh, uh, gets you on a list that uh, uh, you, you can't make any other way. We get inquiries all the time and say, must be on an interstate, must have access to an interstate interchange. We don't make those lists, so we're immediately out of the running. We've talked about natural gas and the other things that, that knock us off of many lists. So uh, having interstate access, you know, we try to market the fact that we're 20 minutes uh, from Interstate 81. Um, or at least 581, and uh, uh, that's good, but that's not on an interstate. Uh, and so having that access, easy transportation down to I-40, it's that connector between 581, 81, and I-40 down in Greensboro that is critical to the transportation system uh, in Franklin County and to uh, 
manufacturers, shippers, employers uh, in our community. And 220 is just not uh, uh, the capacity to handle that truck traffic on 220 is not sufficient for many people to say, yes, I want to expand uh, in a community that doesn't have an interstate. So our board has been on record for a number of years of being supportive of I-73. And as Mr. Commissioner said uh, again yesterday, reaffirmed our support and are working uh, diligently with the both state and federal folks in conjunction with our neighbors uh, to try to begin getting some funding started. Somebody asked a question yesterday, who is it that's opposed to I-73 that we need to try to talk to? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not really a function of being against I-73, it's, it's how do we get somebody to put uh, an appropriation into the highway bill to get us going. Uh, it's, it's priorities. How do you get I-73 prioritized ahead of some other project in somebody else's state or somebody else's community? At the f this won't happen without federal dollars and it's a function of getting uh, federal transportation money into the federal highway bill or through some of the uh, Tiger Highway grants that come from the federal government uh, to get this project started. And our board voted yesterday to uh, uh, diligently work with our neighbors to try to get some of that funding started. We can say we're for it. We can say we're going to wait till the money comes around. But at the end of the day, somebody's got to be working on making sure that happens. And, and that was the goal and intent of the board's vote yesterday. Yeah. When that happens, if that happens. When that happens. When that happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm giving you the choice. I right. yeah. <laughs> when that happens, um, in layman's language, how does that, what, what, is it, what does Roanoke have? What does um, a city in North Carolina have? What does Richmond have? What do they have now? We're not as big as some of those places, but we are on a north-south area that is a blip off some of those roads. How does that change what happens? What does that do for the county? Let me take a whack at that because uh, Mr. Elf did not, uh, I think, pat the county on the back for the job overall, all of us have done here on economic development. That's what this is really focused mm -hmm. on. Uh, since 2011, we have added 355 high paying jobs through economic development in this county. We? We, the county. county. Okay. Through economic development efforts through our offices. Uh, you've probably had Mike Burnett on here several mm -hmm. times, our director of economic I can't keep track of him. I don't know yeah. what he's doing. He's, <laughs> he is a busy boy. He is a busy boy. And I'll tell you, we've done, we've done so well as a county that uh, we're in the top 15% of the whole state for municipalities and counties that are under 100,000 uh, in terms of 100,000 population. And so when you look at places outside of the big cities, we're in the top 15% of the state. We weren't always there. No. Uh, last year we finished up top 15%. And it's through a lot of things. It's through our county government working, but it's also because people want to come to this area. So even though we don't have that I-73, the people here are wonderful. The people, the, the area is one of the most beautiful places you'd ever want to live. We have a lot to offer to people to come. If we get a few more things like interstate system, mm -hmm. some of the other things that we try to do, you know, without taxing ourselves to death, uh, people will come. And speaking of taxes, we are, we are amongst the, I will call developed mm -hmm. counties in the state. Our, uh, our financial advisor has just advised us that we are second lowest amongst our peer counties. In other words, you don't have a real high unemployment rate. It's a place to do good business. It's a, a place operational. We're the second lowest around in the state. So we, we have a low tax rate. We all feel taxes are high. But we've been able to maintain low taxes and bring in industry because mm -hmm. we have so much in this county. We, you know, And we're trying to look forward, as Mr. Truff indicated, look forward to making sure that continues with uh, 
hopefully we'll get that interstate system through. Does the, thank you, that, that folks pay attention. This is economics, at least two. But we're, 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 it's your place, your hometown, your county. And it's good to know. And uh, if you have ideas, if you, are, you have connections or whatever, nobody wants to take away that which we revel in the nature of having a court days, the nature of this place being the finest place on the face of the earth to live. Forget all the other things. Good place to be. Now, how do you continue that and how do you get other folks down here? And this is what we're talking about. That causes some changes. And you have to do them right. And we have to trust the people that are running the county and that are doing that. They have been doing it superbly, just right. And, uh, but you have a constant effort on the part of other jurisdictions. And they don't say as many good things about us. They <laughs> want the business, right? That's right. very competitive. It's and uh, extremely oh, competitive. you're so kind. <laughs> what do they know? But in any event, but that's where it goes. Yep. So you have to keep your foot in the door. You have to keep talking it up. You have to keep dealing with it. And yet, that which you as a community love about your home and your hometown and your home county, you want to maintain. Now, it ain't easy. It's not. We've managed to pull it off. And this court days coming, coming up is a throwback, not to five or 10 or 20 years ago, but to many years ago. The fair that was uh, set up for last year that came in that was so successful that's going to be back, that uh, was such a positive. Well, I get things every day telling me what's going to happen. Yeah. People are on top of it. Right. Don't forget, one of my favorites, Antique Farm Days, 12th year this year, Father's Day weekend, June 19, 2021. So it, mm -hmm. all of these kinds of events, it's the amazing. fair, it's the amazing. court days, the Antique Farm Days, it just defines, if you will, us in our county. It really yeah. defines the Farm place College. Lives. Fair, yeah. yeah, granddaughter graduated, and uh, 250 graduates. It's an exciting place. Where are they from? There were about less than 30 were Franklin County. Ah, somebody's paying attention, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, huh? Mm -hmm. And the people that run that place, uh, I went up there, they honored some of the top graduates. Yeah, I'm not going to brag, but yeah just in case you thought that was the case. But in any event, we went there and had dinner. It was dinner fit for a king. Mm -hmm. In the room with the big chandelier, mm -hmm. you know? You lose track of where you are. Fair <laughs> you know? But they do it right. Now, that's the one thing that I find, and uh, Mr. Huff, that's a big credit to the way you have moved it. And I know you're relying on other people, and I know all that happens, but you have to have a driving force that kind of keeps you on the road. Fair enough? Absolutely. And that is happening at the college, too. And uh, I didn't mind sitting in the sun, you know, <laughs> mm. to watch 250 graduates. Yeah. It was great. And that's the way people find Franklin County. And how many people that are here, we are a patriotic, hard-working, blue-collar, white-collar, whatever you want to say, area. And on one hand, want to brag about it, want to talk about it, but we don't want it to change. So maybe we better ease up a little bit. No, you can't do that because then they're going to go somewhere else. That's a tough, that's an interesting concept. How do you do that? 
when you have other people competing, other jurisdictions, other municipalities competing, and you don't want to lose the court day, the firm, the Blue Ridge. You don't want to lose that, right. but yet you have to do something. That's a difficult move. If you don't do it, unfortunately, because costs just continue to rise, your taxes mm -hmm. eventually would go up. So it's extremely important for our, our future that we bring in not an overpowering amount of, uh, of uh, other things and people, but we need to bring in as much as we can to offset those constant economic pressures that we have. Mm -hmm. Constant, boy, well, I'll tell you, it's a good word. Being a banker, you'd appreciate it. There's such a thing yeah. as good inflation and all of those things. That was the one thing that I was glad to be rid of. <laughs> that part of it, you know. Yeah. The people part of banking was, gosh, yeah. I, I, to this day, you know, it's, it's funny when D and I, D, of course, when I was a banker, most of the time they knew Carol. And now they know D. Uh, and to have somebody come up and say, hey, you didn't know him when he was doing this. Well, the fact is, we grew up together, so she did. She knew me when I was a scruffy kid, you know. So <laughs> it's, and I, and I won't, 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 boo. If my math teachers ever heard that I was chairman of the board and president of a bank, they, they're probably all just turning over in there, you know what. So, but this is the nature of the community. And it's, uh, we keep working. So what you're saying is that we have good plans, we have ways that we're working to make things function the way we like them to, and yet, on the other side, still adding. That's a tough thing to do, though, to make it a little more la -di da for somebody from Philadelphia, New York, or wherever that comes in. And How do you do that? I'm sitting here thinking that it is rare that a meeting goes by that our board doesn't have a discussion about um, an economic development project that we're working on, one we're trying to work on, okay. one we're trying to uh, solicit. And the good part of that is that our board, and certainly Bob's been a, uh, a leading advocate in this area, uh, is always encouraging staff to be aggressive, always occur encouraging us to uh, go the extra mile and do what's necessary, do uh, whatever it takes to bring that uh, uh, business to Franklin County. Not that we've been irresponsible, because I think our board has got a very clear set of guidelines and, and responsible fiscal uh, reality to how we attract economic development. But at the end of the day, their end goal is, as he just articulated, we have to grow our commercial and industrial base in the community in order to um, uh, fund, quite frankly, uh, the things that are required to keep pace with uh, our competitors and our neighbors and, and, quite frankly, the quality of life that we've come to expect. Um, we've talked a lot about what it takes to recruit business, and it's more than just incentives or just having mm -hmm. land or just having, I mean, it's workforce, it's infrastructure, it's, it's having a YMCA. You, know, you recruit a business from a community uh, that's got a YM, YMCA and they're going to expand or relocate and they come here and say, well, where's your Y? Or where's your um, uh, county fair? Where's your quality of life for my employees? Mm -hmm. What are they going to do on their off hours? They, they need to be happy. If I'm going to recruit people, how do we keep them here and, and uh, have the longevity in those employees? It's all of those things put together that make up our economic development focus. And, and our board's been incredibly helpful in that area of keeping focused in, in what it takes to, to do all of those things. Amen. Good comments. We are a patriotic community. We start everything with the Pledge of Allegiance. It, it's. <laughs> it's saying, uh, and a prayer. I got a chief patriot sitting right here in the studio now, but yeah. this is important because until you know where you've been, it's hard to tell where you're going. Hmm. You've got to put those two together somehow. And 
I am an eternal patriot. Uh, I, I really, uh, at 17, I was a patriot. Made everybody upset when I left and joined the Navy. Hard to believe I did that at 17. But that set the tone, you know, until I got, until I came down to Virginia. Where are you from, boy? <laughs> New York. <laughs> Forget it. You changed your accent. Very I quick. really did. I can <laughs> left or right. <laughs> it depends. But it's 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 interesting. But that's the nature of your home, ladies and gentlemen. We all need to work towards that direction. Okay, I'm not waving the flag too much, am I? I guess you can't wave the flag too not, much, can you? Can't. Bob, any other comments on on the meeting, on something that you know that's uh, is a favorite? Well, just uh, I would encourage you. You mentioned a little earlier that uh, Tara hasn't been Tara Holland hadn't been here for a while, and I'll mention it to her. I'm sure Rick will to, to come over because Tara is in charge of another major aspect of uh, mm -hmm. our county, and that's the tourism. It's one of the things that. Uh, I think she's excelled at is uh, in pulling together the fair, getting that all going. I know she supports everything that's going on in the county. I've been working with her and some folks over in Bedford County and the people down at the uh, Booker T. Washington Monument on, on putting together mm -hmm. a, a history trail uh, up and down 122. Tara's in all of these things and I, I hope uh, we bring her in because tourism What's going on up at Ferrum with the Crooked Road and uh, the things that uh, Ferrum's doing itself, Rocky Mountain, of course, with the Harvester. Uh, the Crooked Road is very important to us, as is the, the things that are going on over at the lake. There's just a plethora of things in the county that she's working on and that benefit all of us. Mm -hmm. it, it makes us who we are, and most importantly, it makes people want to come and, and visit with us. And, spend a few shekels as, <laughs> while they're here. So I That's amazing. You break it. Yeah. You're right. It, it has really done it. That uh, harvester is... Oh, yeah. And they have moved in the right direction. They have included... They, they ha they're not particular about only this. No. But it's a little bit of everything. Right. And children and from every aspect. It's It's really working and we're seeing things happening downtown. It's a, I'm looking to see, I, I, it's kind of interesting, the facility, our courts facility, where we, we're not, are we talking about adding building outside or are we changing within the framework of what's there? Renovating existing space. Renovating, okay, existing, all right. That's a grand building. And uh, even if you can't figure out how to get in, yeah. it's whoa. <laughs> can't get in the way you used to. No, we can walk around, keep yeah. knocking on doors until one somebody answers yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then to talk about the why with its two locations and other things that go on outside those two areas. So, uh, what is an appropriation for voting machine replacement? Now that. That says, that's what it says. Now, we have to spend money, mm -hmm. and we need to get new voting machines because the other ones are out of date or broken, or we need more. All of you vote. Or the, the states told us we need more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just noticed that on there. Yeah. The, uh, the state has basically said that uh, we can no longer buy or replace the existing machines we have because they want... Uh, machines that have a uh, printer attached to them so that there is a trail uh, of the votes. The electronic only voting machines have become suspect in uh, some elections in other places, not here, but other places. Mm -hmm. And so statewide, there was a mandate to replace the existing machines. Uh, we tried to get out in front of it by setting aside some money over the last couple of years. And the um, uh, Board of Elections uh, sent us uh, their final decision on which machines to go with uh, and they hope to be able to uh, use them this fall 
uh, as a sort of a trial run before the presidential election next year. The voter turnout certainly will be, is expected to be heavier in a presidential year than other years and so uh, they wanted to try to get them in, in house and uh, get the training done for the election this fall and, uh, and then roll them out uh, in a big way for the elections next year. So we're looking for that fast to turn around. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, again, $250,000 of local money mandated by the state. You've got to replace your machines. And the board had to, had to mm -hmm. come up to meet that mandate. And um, it's another one of those things that in, in the scheme of doing business took money away from all the other priorities that uh, many of us would have liked to have seen funded. But you have to do those mandated things first. Very difficult yeah. sometimes because you can be going down a road and all of a sudden. Um, let's uh, take a break right now. We'll come back and conclude. All right? Sure. So get your gears set to summarize. Is that a fair word? <laughs> and uh, we have a, a gentleman in-house that's going to talk to us, and uh, he is what I would call a patriot with a capital P. You'll see. Just a few minutes. So... Uh, in the meantime, please pay attention to our sponsors. I would appreciate it. We'll be back after these very important words.